Hello. Maybe you have uh, already recognized that in the last few days I've posted a couple of videos um, with the sound of the so-called FPGA SID. And um, today I want to talk about this uh, small device. And um, I have done a couple of tests so, uh, over the last um, few days. And um, I think this uh, makes more sense to test this uh, small thing before having some kind of introduction or something like this. So um, basically the FPGA SID is a project to replace the original SID. And um, I think you have already seen this. So this is the original. 6581 SID and uh, this is quite an early model from uh, 1983 and uh, this was um, the first uh, SID developed for the C64 and uh, it has a couple of flaws but um, some people like especially the sound created by the 6581 and there are different version like the, the R, uh, R3, R4 and the R4AR and they they all sound a little bit different especially when you come to the filter and the resonance and um, I like this model very much and I have this in most of my C64s but especially for newer games you really have to go for the second version of the SID developed by Commodore and it's the 8580 and um, there is just the R5 version and um, I think they started to produce them around 1987 or something like this and this is really the re replacement of the 6581 so and um, since those uh, chips are pretty old I mean uh, this one is uh, 35 years old now well not exactly because it's week 40 but um, almost let's say <laughs> 35 years old and um, due to this age and due to the fact that they're getting quite hot during operation they tend to uh, break down over the time so it's uh, quite unavoidable I mean you can uh, do a couple of things you can try to cool them by adding heat sinks like here and um, this is this is really helpful and especially in the in the C64 case, uh, C64 2 case, which, which is the, the flat, longer case for the C64, it is uh, in terms of um, thermal aspects uh, not as good as the old bread bin, which is a little bit higher and adds some better, um, let's say, ventilation inside the C64. But um, so heat is really a major threat to those old ICs as well as uh, voltage and especially older uh, power supplies tend to kind of vary in terms of uh, voltage and uh, some of them getting higher over the time and this is something that kills the SID as well and uh, but if you pay attention to all those things so keep them cold and um, having good uh, power supply then you can uh, run them for I think a couple of years, tens, whatever, even longer. But um, since they tend to fail it's, and they are not produced anymore, um, the market is um, let's say a little bit tight for SID chips right now. And when you uh, watch the prices at eBay, you can see over the last year there's a constant race. And uh, it's really hard to get a 8580 below, let's say, 25 euros. And uh, the 6581, they are really um, tending towards um, 30, 40 euros, something like this right now. And um, so there's, there's, well, the end inside. It's uh, really a an, an resource that will end sometimes and uh, people started to think about how can we replace the SID chip and uh, one of the first attempts was uh, the so-called SWINSID and uh, followed by the SWINSID Nano 
and I got two different models here, so they come in different uh, uh, versions. And um, so this one got some got some jumpers. You can uh, change it between the 6581 and the 8580. And uh, this is for the voltage selection. And uh, this one comes with solder points instead of jumpers. And uh, you can add some LED to the bottom as well. Then you get some flashing. Uh, light show and uh, SwinSit is playing something but in terms of emulation of the SID, the SwinSit Nano uh, falls quite short and it is not really a, a good replacement so it is something you can uh, add to your C64 if you just uh, watch some things from the past occasionally or something like this and if you do not uh, pay that much attention to accurate emulation or something and uh, those things are really cheap, so um, most of the time you can get this for 10, 12 euros or dollars or something like this. And uh, for a quick repair or for something that uh, it's just uh, used from time to time, it is it is quite okay. But uh, those um, Swinsets Nanos, they are lacking the analog inputs as well, so you can't use the, the mouse or the pedals for the C64 with those uh, replacement sits and um, quite often they are not really uh, recognized by uh, newer boards like the reloaded MK2 for example and um, this gap is uh, going to be closed by the FPGA sit and as you can see if you just compare them uh, visually there is a lot of more stuff on the FPGA board and even um, the bottom side got a couple of um, different uh, things on it and um, I think the the most interesting thing about this uh, FPGA set is that you can update this so you got this uh, GTAC connector and you can connect this uh, via a uh, USB blaster or USB interface to your uh, laptop or computer and then you can um, update the FPGA set and uh, it is uh, still in kind of a beta phase so it's still under development but uh, the guys are making very good progress and uh, from, from update to update you can really hear the differences and um, the emulation is actually quite um, close to the emulation the emulator Vice is using so Vice is the C64 emulator that runs on um, Linux as well as Windows and um, even if I'm personally I'm not really a fan of the Vice SID emulation but anyway it is uh, in, in most areas uh, very accurate and uh, if we talk about the, the 8580 for example it is, it is very hard to distinguish so there are still some flaws in terms of the 6581 but um, as I said, it is uh, still under development. And uh, I think due to this uh, possibility to update the firmware of the FPGA, so this is really, let's say, the, the future of the SID sound. So if we, if we just accept that uh, some, someday we, will, we won't get any replacements anymore, any longer, and we really have to go in this uh, emulation direction, then I think this is the best... Uh, base for doing so and uh, especially with the latest update with the uh, firmware version 0.7 and 0.8 we are able to update the FPGA set by using a C64 tool called uh, the config guru and uh, therefore it's not uh, required to have this USB connection any longer and um, therefore it's uh, very comfortable even if this is, uh, let's say, the, the final version, if this is going to be sold and they find some, uh, well, minor bugs or some improvements or something like this, you can easily update this uh, by disk or by SD to IC device. And um, the next very interesting thing is that um, this uh, little device is not just emulating one SID, now it's capable of emulating two SIDs at the very same time. So and uh, it is a one-to-one -one replacement so looks very much the same and you can add this to 
any C64 board you want and um, it works on the very old boards, the, the, the 407 as well as uh, the 425, the 466 and uh, the newer boards, the 469 and uh, you do not have to jump or something like this uh, and that's really it, it runs on every board you throw this thing on and using the config guru program on the C64 you, you can say okay my SID is going to be a 6581 and my second SID is going to be an 8580 and then you can uh, switch between those or you can run this in stereo mode and all that possibilities and um, you can even assign uh, kind of a stereo mode by using just two voices on one SID and two different voices on the other uh, which I have demonstrated in one of my videos as well and uh, therefore this is a very uh, versatile uh, device and um, I think this is really one of the, the best projects uh, ever done for a replacement of the SID and um, for my for my testing purposes I, I've done a couple of things right now and I'm just going to explain how this thing is going to be connected to the board so for the stereo SID options it is really necessary to uh, give the SID additional address information and uh, for this you can use this kind of a small clamps or something like this and um, this is going to be connected to the, to the CPU as well as to the ex uh, expansion port and uh, this is the same system like uh, the SID FX is using or even the, the mixed SID and um, so the, the principle is uh, going to be the very same and uh, if you don't like those um, mechanic things you can even so uh, sold, solder the lines um, directly to the board for example like I, I've done this for my music piece uh, music C64s and um, the next thing you have to do is um, if you add this to your board uh, the board is just able to route one audio signal so you're just uh, able to hear SID1 for example and if you want to access um, the audio from the SID2 you have to add another cable and um, this looks um, basically like this one so it's connected to this uh, small socket here and uh, this is uh, going to be the connection for the second voice but uh, I have changed this a little bit because um, I like to have uh, the stereo signal in one uh, place and uh, I don't like to route audio through the board and uh, through a wire to different places so I uh, um, built myself a small uh, breakout adapter using two old uh, sockets and um, this this pin is the, the audio pin, the audio out pin and it is uh, disconnected between those uh, two sockets and uh, with this little switch I can decide whether the signal is going through the board and I have this normal SID1 mono signal whatever. and if I switch it back I can have um, the stereo signal coming from the audio out from this pin as well as from the socket and it goes directly to my 3.5mm uh, jack socket here as uh, demonstrated in uh, one of my other videos as well so um, don't be scared that's uh, going to be a little bit different in the final version there will be a um, similar approach like uh, using those clamps and you can use um, a pin on the video out uh, socket which is not used uh, by default and uh, there will be a breakout cable delivered as well to access the stereo signal from your normal uh, video port and um, so this is uh, going to be very customer friendly and uh, I'm not sure about the final price so uh, this is uh, quite open right now but um, assuming that um, those chips are getting more expensive over the time I think spending even a little bit more money than uh, it will cost to buy new uh, two new SIDs on eBay or whatever um, it is really worth because you have uh, a stereo SID solution already included if you consider using a SID FX for example dual SID board 
uh, which is uh, quite costly. It's around 80 or 90 euros or something like this. And um, even the the sit uh, the mixed sit, which uh, is quite low in price, just 25 euros. But uh, you need to assemble it by your own, by yourself, or you get an, an already assembled one somewhere on, on eBay. I've seen them for around 50 euros or something like this. Then you end up uh, with a more expensive solution, considering that you have to buy the sits anyway. So um, I think this is a really a very very interesting uh, thing, and um, especially having this update feature in mind, it's really very open for for different um, applications and, and purposes. So, well, that's basically all I have to say about this one and. Um, as I mentioned, there are a couple of videos where I've already used this and um, I will keep you informed about the further progress of this project and if you're really uh, interested in to learn more about this or want to add yourself to a wish list that you get informed when it's going to be available, then uh, just head over to uh, www.fpgasit.de. The page is in uh, English language, so don't be afraid. And there's, uh, as mentioned, a wish list where you can add your email address and then you get information about um, the current status as well as uh, when this is going to be available. So if you have any questions so far, please use the comment section. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. And um, if you want to stay informed and want to hear some more examples coming from the FPGA, then uh, please feel free to subscribe and uh, as usual. Thanks for watching and bye bye.